That's because the lives of the millionaires that make up Congress happens to be 47% of Congress. Both parties, both houses, 47% of them are millionaires. I don't fault them for that. That's a good thing. They've been successful. They're living the American dream. I'm happy for that. But at the same time, is that the life that you and I lead? When they make a decision, like delaying the sequester and decisions on balancing the budget, and when they delay that, does that affect them the same way that it's affecting us? Not exactly. And they don't feel the pressure to make sure that they're going to get it right. We need to correct that. Now, I've said a lot of things about what's wrong, a bunch of issues that we all know about. Let me address something else. How do I fix it? How is it, what is the objective that I believe in, besides being connected to the constituents and speaking with them, making sure that we are actually targeting your goals, your objectives as a community? Well, it's easy. We actually get on the floor of Congress and we actually talk about the issues that matter the issues that you have, to get on the floor of Congress and say, this is an issue my constituents want to talk about. This is an issue we need to make a law about. This is where we need to take action. I'll give you a great example. I would love to go onto the floor of Congress and have a conversation. We need to balance the budget. That is our requirement. It is not a choice. It's an obligation that we have from Congress to the people to manage the nation's money better. So, because we have this obligation, we also will create legislation to back it up. Real simple. If we miss the budget, it takes out Congress's paycheck. The last budget we just had, we were short by $1.1 trillion. We were off by about 47%. Let's pass the law that says, you know what? Next year, Congress loses 47% of its pay. Take that money, put it into the IRS, pay back the debt. Now, is that going to make a huge debt? No. Is it symbolic? Absolutely. But more importantly, it's action. They are going to feel the consequences just as we feel the consequences. If they cannot balance the budget, they will feel the consequences of that in their pocket to their livelihood. Now, someone may say, well, you can never pass that. Why not? If I get on the floor of Congress, I ask them that. Tell me, what constituent is going to say, no, my congressman deserves to make five times more money than the average person in their district, and they should not lose their money even though they're not doing their job? I don't know anyone who will say that. And I don't see a single representative of Congress who would actually be able to stand in front of their constituents with a straight face and say to them, no, I can't vote for that, because that's a horrible idea. And you know what? That starts change. That's the first start of change. Because now we've got action moving forward. Accountability has come back at that point. They have an action that they need to do, and they have a consequence that they do not. Let's do that. Let's make that happen. Let's look at some of the other things that we can do. Number one thing that we've heard in every state of the union since President Obama was hired and we elected him both times. The one thing that we've heard from Congress, both houses, both parties, continuously since 2008. Jobs are the number one job in America. The number one priority. In 2009, there were about 9 million people out of work. Excuse me, correction. No, 11 million people were out of work. Today, there are 21 million people out of work. Are they doing their job? No. Does that feel like the priority is jobs? No. Let's make it that. How about instead of all this rhetoric about how we can improve jobs, let's do something that's very simple. Cut the corporate tax rate. Real simple. If a company can afford to keep its doors open, that company can employ people. It's a simple, simple process. The United States is 39.5% of 
the highest corporate tax in the world. I think we have some room to cut that number and become more competitive with the rest of the world, which will create jobs, which creates revenues, which creates taxes for the government to spend, and it gives us the opportunity to live our lives with a little bit more than month to month. These are simple things. They can be done. All we have to do is stand up and do that. And right now we have representation that does not. Our representative right now is the fifth most moderate representative in the entire Congress. He is taking positions that are counter to what he's promised in the campaign. Now, I'm not going to bash him. Right? That's not what I'm here to say. But what I am here to say is we have a choice. We don't have to just go with what the party is putting in front of us. Whether that's me, and I would love it to be, or if we choose someone else, fine. Let's have the best person in Congress. I don't care who it is. The best person who is going to make a change in some of these issues. Because I swear to you, it is not rocket science. You know how I know it's not rocket science? How do I know it's not that difficult? Because you do it every day. Every American does it every day. You make these choices. You pay these bills. You work. If you can do it, why can't a group of millionaires who are well-educated, that have all of the staff they could possibly need, why can't do, they do what you do every day in your home? They can't. They're just not being held accountable. Well, that's stupid. I think I have a few more minutes. So, let me... Pet peeves. Two pet peeves that I want to address. And then I'll open up to questions that you may have. Gun control, drones. Big subjects. <laughs> big issues. I am against gun restriction bans. It's a big peeve of mine. It's something that I find that's very important. The Second Amendment is critical to America. Governments should be afraid of their people, and people should be able to defend themselves. <laughs> that was the goal and the purpose of the Second Amendment. And these aren't just words. They've been proved time and time again, not only in America, but across the entire world. And it's not because I believe America is an evil country. It's not because I believe that our leaders, and Congress, and, and the government are evil people who are going to suddenly come in the statute. Not today. Tomorrow they might. Maybe we're getting it. It's a slippery slope because Power corrupts, and ultimate power corrupts ultimate. And there is no ultimate power bigger than our government. And we, that's why this nation was created with the people as a source of the power, and not the government. Because ultimately, the government will corrupt, and it seeks that greater and greater power, and micromanage and take over our lives. The Second Amendment is important because it prevents that. It is one of the tools. Besides, remaining connected to Congress. So I am against that. I do not agree with the New York Safe Act. I do not agree with the executive orders that President Obama has put forth, that Vice President Biden himself on tape has said to the public, will not work. I do not believe in pandering to the fears of the public and, the and putting out laws that are only applicable to those who like the idea and actually serve no purpose. The laws and gun registrations in the New York Safe Act, the laws that are proposed by the executive order, the talks that are happening in Congress right now, if you implemented every single one of them, this is important, every single one of their proposals as it is made, the Binghamton Civic, Soci the Binghamton Civic Center Association shootings would still have happened. Why are we dealing with laws that cannot address the core problem? 
because that is not the point. The point is to have the power in government and government to control. Well, guess what? I don't agree with that. If we're going to make legislation against guns, we better make something that actually does something, makes it worth it because our freedoms are worth it. Let's make sure we're selling for the right thing. Drones. I have a big problem with drones, and I want to address that. I know it's an issue a lot of people have been talking about. By the way, I'm bringing these up because as I'm going around the entire district, these are some of the issues people are bringing up to me. And this is part of the focus that I am getting so that I know, besides my views, these are the issues I need to stand up for if I were to be in Congress. But the issue of drones. I do not believe that we should be going full force forward on an issue that we have legislation that doesn't even cover. Let me be clear. Drones, the use of unmanned aerial vehicles in the United States as a matter of surveillance has zero laws that regulate it. It is rife for abuse. And at the moment, we have congressional leaders and members, including in the 22nd District, that are promoting the growth of unmanned aerial vehicles. That is a problem. We have Big Brother. It's called a drone. People may think that seems a little extreme. And yet, do you know what's in the air? And if it is, and I say this again, power corrupts, ultimately power corrupts ultimately without legislation to protect ourselves from it, how do you know the way that the drone is going to be used? There's nothing to stop it from being used against us. I have a concern with that. I think we need to pause with this. I think we need to make sure that our constituents are aware of the actual fact that these drones can be used in almost any way, and there is no law that prevents it, prevents it from being done so. These are thoughts that we should focus on. These are the things that are important and what people are telling me are important across the 22nd District. And I want to take an opportunity uh, at the end. I'm sorry. At the end, we'll be taking an opportunity. I want you to think about whatever question you have, please ask me. I'll be open. And anything I can't answer today, either for time or for knowledge, I will make sure that I will get back to you. Because this is important for all of us. And we should know what's going on what we want out of this, out of anyone that comes. So I want to thank you. I look forward to speaking to you at the end. Thank you.